relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. You yeah. sick? You need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah, but it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good, but this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. You Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. We got a special show today. Now, I know I've said that 400 times before, but this time, I absolutely mean it. Um, Because we got a special guest. First and foremost, Harry, what's popping? Oh, you know me, Dante, the same thing. My whole mission is trying to keep these gators down. And you know what? what? I'm having a tough time doing it. It's difficult. Pimping ain't easy unless you practice. Dre, what's going on? Sure, I'm cool. It's fucking hot outside. It's, it's hot balls. Yeah, we out here though. Let me get to my my special guest in the building. Friend of the show's been on the show several times in the motherfucking building. Uh, funny dude, good friend of mine. He's done all kinds of shit and Comedy Central or blah blah blah. We know everybody on this motherfucker. <laughs> Funny, <laughs> yeah, me. Uh, give it up for Richie Redding, y'all. Give it up for Richie Redding. Yeah, Clap it up. dude. Yeah. Glad. What's to going be on, here. Rich? How you doing, bro? Ah, down in Florida, man, and uh, just riding this shit out. You know. How you holding up? Good. It was it was as rough as humanly possible for a couple months, but uh, but things are looking up down here, so I'm grateful for that. What That's part not was... what the news said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, dude, we're not going off the compound, man. I'm I'm playing this shit safe. Really? Are you in the house? In the house? You're not going out at all? Uh, They have some some outdoor space in Florida. They got some room to walk around. I mean, there's a golf course right out the back door. It's uh, it's it's kind of a gator community, but you know, we call it the compound. And, you didn't uh, see uh, you didn't see Richie uh, holding up that AK-47 as those protesters walked by in his polo shirt and his khakis. You think I don't own, own an AR-15 now that I live in Florida? <laughs> got, I got two guns now, and it is great. <laughs> <laughs> two legal guns, just me and my friends. Two the specs. What? No, I got you. Because what? What was that? that? Oh, I don't know. Oh, that was Dante's thing. Anyway, but, but you're so all right. So, what was the rough? You're saying it was rough out there, or rough for you having you and uh, your girl having to kind of quarantine down there? Uh, well. I mean, that first, I mean, that was almost like th- there was th- the, the first I saw, five days. I saw you up here. You were up here before the whole thing. Why'd you go down to Florida of all places? Because her parents both got sick. They were both on really? ventilators. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Her mom was on for nine days. Her dad was on for 20 days. And wow. uh, I mean, dude, you can't imagine how <laughs> fucking stressful it was and, and just how yeah. touch and go it was. So we're it, it, for unlucky as possible that they both went on, but then it's a miracle that we got them back. But uh, wow, and it was yeah, the COVID, so, like it was officially it was oh, COVID. absolutely, yeah, yeah oh yeah. wow. Um, but we we fucking like when we got noticed that her mom was getting released from the hospital, we we just we we were afraid because back back then it's funny the shit has turned around now. Now New York is pulling over Florida people, but Florida was pulling over New York people. And, really? uh, yeah. And I was afraid to go down with, with Jersey plates. So I, uh, 
I, I rented a car. I called up Enterprise. I was like, yeah, I need a big vehicle with Florida tags and no questions asked. They're like, we got that. Uh-huh. And so, so Enterprise You know what's weird? Enterprise would have done that a year ago, even before COVID. That's their policy. Yeah. It's like, so, no questions asked. Yeah, so, so check this out. The reason we got it was because they said that there was uh, that they had checkpoints, right? And right. We, we get up to the the border and all of a sudden there's a sign that said it was like half a mile checkpoint and my girl's looking around for her mask she can't find it so we're having this it, we had a 15 second long fight and we're like it's your fucking fault i can't find it like fucking shut the fuck up i've got my mask and she pulls over cracks the window this much and i'm expecting it to be cops it was just Two dudes that look like they worked at Home Depot, and uh, the guy comes over, his mask is down to his tits. I'm like, yo, mask up, bro. He goes, sir, the virus is everywhere. We all have it already. Boy. That's the person that is trained doing, by doing the, the state of Florida. Who is this? And so what, what if you... Uh- why have the checkpoint? I don't even understand why so, I have the fucking checkpoint. Yeah, exactly. So, so he's like, where are you coming from? And my girl, she's like the worst liar in the world. She goes, we have Florida tags. He goes, where are you coming from? We have Florida tags. So I was like, I had the mask on. I was like, just fucking see Georgia. She's like, Georgia? He goes, all right, have a good day. That was it. And like literally every person on that road at that spot is coming from Georgia. Like it's impossible to come from anywhere else. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Now, is it, if, if you had said you were from New York or something, they would have turned you around? They would have taken down your license plate, and they were supposedly doing spot check-ins, like surprise check-ins that they would they could send law enforcement around to see. But dude, her, this is how unlucky they were. Her parents were the first case of COVID in West Palm Beach. They were the first ones in, in ICU. Like really? they obviously got it from somebody else, but they were like they they the had first very one light symptoms. Needed to be yeah. ventilated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But her mom. Uh, her last words before she went on the on the ventilator was astounding. It was this super emotional, like you know, they're on Facetime and she was breathing forty times a minute, right? So it's like it's, <sighs> she's she like, they call it happy hypoxia. That's that's the weird yeah. thing with this disease is that people feel fine even though they're crashing. It's like having altitude sickness. Yeah, right? yeah, like you, that's you what they were saying. Good. I saw a couple of videos about that where they were saying that it just it, it looks like altitude it's altitude sickness, and that's why they were saying that they were they might not have been treating it right with the ventilators, that the ventilators yeah. were doing more more damage than than good. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean that that's a, a separate thing, but. Uh... So her mom, it's like, you know, she's on FaceTime with her. She's like, mom, just, it's, everything's going to be fine. Just go on the ventilator. It's going to breathe on, for you for a few days. We're going to be there when you get off. We love you. We love you. And her mom, she's like, she's high as shit from, from the hypoxia. Her, the last thing she said before she went on the ventilator was, don't forget to buy cheap coffins. <laughs> <laughs> is that, oh, Jesus. Wow. That is the, the greatest wow. Jewish mom mic drop in history. Wow. <laughs> my like, god oh. don't let them don't let them finagle you into buying <laughs> anything with gold or copper yeah no walnut don't, for me baby yeah don't let them take your shekels <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah wow. and they don't now, remember how did, you, any how did your girl it. handle that um i mean so she's you know she's a veterinarian so like she basically assembled a team of professionals like you know she had a panel of experts that were she was a step ahead of this thing at like every single you know turning point and like she was she was making she had people making suggestions and shit and uh yeah i mean a big part of it is like getting them off the ventilator it's like really hard so it was kind of, she was kind of in the category that she knows too much you uh-huh. know but uh I mean, germane to this podcast is that uh, when I tell you two parents on a ventilator is not an aphrodisiac, right. buddy, buddy, right. it yeah. was not a horny time in this yeah. household. Uh, oh, boy. So, uh, yeah. So no she hook about, up. Dude. No hook it up. Was, like, we went separate bedrooms for a minute because she had fucking, she had this like, she has this, uh, this stress response that we didn't know about that about. Once every two minutes, she just goes, Bleh. so for like 
a month and a half, she was on the verge well, of vomiting that's, that's constantly. That's attractive. That's attractive, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, if she's blowing you, that's great, though. It's like, Ugh. she's like, oh, yeah, wow. That's it. Talk to it. Talk to it. <laughs> Really, when yeah, you think so. about it, anything a woman does when she's blowing you is unattractive when she's not blowing you. The except, face, the sounds. Except humming. Oh, oh humming. Actually, humming's not bad. Humming's not bad. Humming's, but humming's pretty good. Yeah. Talking on the phone is not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if a girl, a girl is just like, you're just hanging out and her makeup's just running down her face for some reason. Yeah, What's again. What's wrong with you? <laughs> only appropriate if she's blowing you. Yeah. <laughs> this bad bitch. Well, how long have you been? How long you been with her, Rich? This is the same uh, girl you were before. Yeah, six years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's it's an interesting thing that you know, you you go through something like that, and somebody really needs that kind of you you know your lady needs that kind of support. Yeah. Like um, you know I mean I know you you and her been been together. I mean you talked about her before on the show before, and yeah. and um, you know how did that. How did that affect you knowing that, you know, she might lose the parents and then it would just be kind of you, you know? Yeah. I mean, dude, it was, it was as heavy duty as possible, you know, like we're there, there's the stress of the, of the pandemic. There's the stress of the quarantine and then there's the added stress of this. And it's like, it was weird. And then she's, it, and mean, then she's dude, vomiting was, every two minutes. Like uh, that's the yeah. Thing. Like <laughs> I mean, it it was definitely like an exercise in patience and like summoning whatever kind of spirituality I have to just like try to be of service and like not make it about me, you know? Because like it's fucking hard to do. Like sometimes it's that Chris Rock shit. Like sometimes you got to play the banjo. Like this, it was. If ever there was banjo time, this was fucking banjo time. I don't understand. You know? I don't understand what you mean by that. I don't, you don't know, know that, that bit. That it's no, like, no. What is it? The tambourine, it, was it? I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sometimes you're not oh, the lead was, singer. Sometimes you got to know blacks with that. their instruments. I always mix them up. Uh, <laughs> tambourine. It was for sure the tambourine. Yeah. But, uh, sometimes yeah. You gotta, if anybody knows those blacks, uh, Richie, because he toured with Cat Williams for a long time, so he knows the blacks. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know where that bass comes from, but <laughs> uh, no, was, thank you, Terry. Yeah, it's like sometimes you just play the tambourine, and it was like, you know, I just had to be as supportive as possible. And, and what, honestly, did you did, did you like, really think it was difficult for you, or I mean, did you just kind of recognize that she was in such a bad place and just kind of jump into action? Because I, I like for me, I always kind of have that 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 uh, you know that 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 over caring thing, like that overprotective yeah. thing, or is it is it difficult for you? Well, I mean, like we weren't getting along well. Like, like the initial quarantine was tough, you know, like we were like snapping at each other constantly. And then this, this happened and then while you were like, in New York, you're saying we were part. actually in. Yeah, we had gone to Jersey to her parents house and uh, mm -hmm. which was empty. They were down here in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, so like we were kind of snapping each other. And then this like brought everything into perspective and and like calmed it down. But it was still, you know, it was a, it was a long haul of like, you know, it's just about this whole other thing you know what i mean right 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 dre yeah. you did y'all and y'all didn't fight or nothing when you had the quant because dre was locked down mm -hmm. he was in the basement like dre came home with the sniffles and dre dre lives in his mom's house and she was like you're not going anywhere and just locked the door and slid slid meals underneath the door and shit so she he was in the house like, like in the wire with bubble <laughs> bubble sister <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> just, yeah. just going to the basement i was not in a fucking internment camp. She just put it on a plate or something, and I picked it up outside on the table. But, however, we were fine. No real she, fight, though. No fighting. No, huh? like, no like, there's nothing to really fight about. You thought you was fucking sick, so you was just like, stay alive, nigga. That was the whole mood. That was why I was trying to fight. <laughs> outside. It's a virus. You can't argue about dishes, nigga. It's a virus happening. You'd be surprised, so, though, man. Some people can't. Fight. Stay focused. Breathe. I yeah. think they, they, the problem is be some mad breakups. Oh yeah, the divorce what, rates. What are through was the, roof. the thing that got that would created the the tension between you guys? Um, I don't even, dude. It was it like this whole thing has been so intense. I don't even know what it was. A lot of it was just like. 
Well, I mean, before the whole intent, you know, before the whole parents thing, I mean, because you said in Jersey, y'all were kind of going y'all were at each other's throats. Or have you yeah. just not been around each other so much? Because you travel a lot and you, yeah. you know, you're not around each other as much. At, you yeah. know what I mean? The, some of it was like, you know, she was over the top precautious and like on top of me about how to wash my hands fucking 20 times a day and, and all that stuff that it was just like infantilizing. It was like, look, I'm fucking, I, I'm doing everything right. Like back the fuck off. Uh. But, uh, I mean, no, it, it was just, it, it was just my shit. It was, it was, we were both afraid. You know what I mean? Like everybody's afraid you're living in fear. It's not like nobody's at their best when they're fucking legitimately afraid for their lives, you know? Yeah, I guess, I guess, I but I'm, you know, like, it's because I was saying that, I was telling Harry that um, I was getting so many, so many consultations from people because they were like, there's so many people that are with, um, so many people are with wives. people that, yeah. so many people that are with people that who they don't want to be with. Right. And there's more of a situation where they're really trying to, you know, they're trying to get away from them. You know, Dude, they they yeah. were in a relationship, but they're trying to get away with them. You know, could you imagine if you were that dude that was like, "Next week I'm dumping this bitch," and then the yeah. fucking curtain falls? Oh. Then, yeah, yeah. Oh, Dre, go ahead. What you was gonna say, Dre? There was a situation where they was saying it's like the same thing with businesses and COVID, where there was like issues financially before COVID, and then COVID came and it's just and then, already underlying issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah more severe so then people really realize like fuck i actually do hate you now that i'm home with you 24 yeah. hours every fucking day well that's the other thing is a lot of people built these lives for themselves where even if they're not in love with their spouse they're they have enough time away where it makes it work you know like it's twofold it's one is the fact that you're away from them at work but the other thing is when you're home you're kind of ruining their vibe like i remember rick flair would talk about this story on like the 30 for 30 where he was married for something like 20 years and then they got divorced within a year when he was home and they're like, what happened? And he's like, I'm home. Like I'm ruining her whole, I'm ruining her whole life. I'm in like in her way, you know, like it just falls apart because yeah. they developed this whole life for themselves that you're not a part of. It's and like now you're investors. Yeah. Yeah. Like you ruined yeah. their whole vibe of what they got going on. Yeah, it's, it's funny because I think, um, like, that wasn't a problem for me, per se, and it wasn't a problem for Harry or, or even for Dre because, you know, we've been doing the podcast for a long time. Yeah. And and uh, I remember even, even uh, you know, I mean, I guess both of y'all had people that you didn't really want to be around to a certain extent. Um, and uh, I know Dre, Dre, Dre's ex-girl, was dry, would drive. I mean, he would he was visiting and he would drive her crazy at, at least once a week. I could he'd be like, Yo, let me ask you something. And he went <laughs> to those because she was literally driving you crazy, driving him crazy. And I and also I think Andre don't like Andre doesn't have a lot of emotion, he's not an emotional person. So when he couldn't understand, like I was trying to say to him even then that look, you don't like her. <laughs> I mean, like, re realistically, yeah. you really don't like her, right? But he still, Drake. What do you? I mean, you have time to risk in retrospect. Do you? What do you think it was? Was it the sex? Was it? Was it? What uh, was it? I, I don't even know. Like, probably creature of habit type shit. Like, yeah, she's just, cool, comfortable. This right here. I'm like, I'm cool. And then it was more so like, this area of my life is fulfilled. I'm yeah. all I care about is comedy anyway. So. Whoever I was with was just somebody I was with. I wasn't putting too much thought into it. Right, right, right. I think also, if I remember, that was a time frame for Andre where he was trying to, like, he had never really had a long-term committed. I think he was trying to make an effort, and that just it's, happened to be the... Some of us are making a swing at bat, and then yeah. I was like, oh, I don't fucking know what the fuck to he, do. Like, he was he really was, trying was, to make it he work. He was trying to... Hey, Richie, he was trying to feel. He was trying to feel <laughs> <laughs> No, it sounds what, to me like you just didn't want to uncheck that box. What's this you know what wetness I mean? on my face? What is <laughs> this liquid? What is I don't understand. Salt water. <laughs> yeah, but like sometimes like when the box is checked, you don't want to uncheck it. All right? It's like yeah. you, you say, you, you, which is weird because you get a lot of people, a lot of guys who will do that. They'll they don't want to uncheck the box because they don't think they have any options. 
When you have options, you're like, Rich, I'm out of, like, later, you know, like you, you just. I was watching, uh, me and my girl were watching this uh, Rami's show on you. Uh, oh, yeah, on Rami, Hulu. yeah. It's really good if you haven't seen it yet. But at one point, I think there's a girl who is kind of like, he finds out, he's into her, and then he finds out it's her cousin. It's his cousin or whatever, the girl he's uh. into. And uh, so he's like, kind of like, I don't know if I should. I don't know. And everyone's like, yeah, go for it. This guy's like, ah, she's probably a distant cousin. Don't even worry about it. It's, you know, all the guys. Are, and my girl's like, how could, I don't know, how could he even consider this? I go, you don't understand that for a man, the options, it's not always the same as a woman's options. You have a plethora. Level, Harry. I'm not saying it is. My point is. You, What'd you say, Dre? I didn't hear what you said. It's not it's not low options to the level you gotta be like, let me go ahead and smash my cousin. Not for you yeah. or me. Son, not for you or me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. There's guys out there who I'm not saying you do it, but there are guys who do have to consider it. Dude, and so I, I, and so just, I was looking at my girl, I was going, must be nice, huh? Must be nice. <laughs> must so be really I nice. I guess some cousin. of us don't have to worry about fucking our cousins. Right, right, right. Must be nice. Nah, man, I'll say this, dude. I, I just I just counseled a guy 27 years old who, you know, his, his, like I was saying, I was talking about this, we were talking about this the other day, Richard, that um, the guy, his mom, his mom is, well, he had five kids, but they had twins that passed away. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has three brothers, two brothers and a sister, three different baby daddies. She's 50 years old, right? Mm-hmm. And... So, you know, and he's he's 20 and apparently the what I get from it is that her uh, the father that the guy, the father that she liked the most was his father and he left. And so and they they look alike. They sound alike from what he says. And so Mm -hmm. she just hates she hated him. Because Ooh. she hated the well, she really loved the father, and she and so she she treat she had the three kids, and she treated them unfairly because she 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 resented his father, and yeah. so like he would take the, the one brother to get Jordans, and he would get nothing, you know, like yeah. just and it some was like people, you ain't. Some people would think that that would need some kind of uh, psychiatry, but I think Dante's get pussy classes can clear that fucking. Well, it, it goes deeper than because here's here's <laughs> I, you know what you want to hear something funny, Rich. Here's the funny thing. I said to him, I said, "Look, you call me, he because he did therapy before, right? Yeah, but he's 27 okay. years old, he's still a virgin. Ooh, can't get his shit together. And then so so I said, you you call me to give you the truth, right? He goes, yeah. I says, okay. So your mom's a hoe, all right? Your mom's a hoe or she was a hoe. I go, she's, I go, you, you you know, she's only 50 some years old, right? She's got uh, five kids, four baby daddies, right? I go, she's putting it out there. But I said, you got to understand that your mom had these kids at a young age when she didn't really have the, she didn't have the uh, the intellectual or the mo- emotional acuity to even have a relationship. Then she has kids, and then she's on survival mode. Yeah, she's so, fucked up for life. Right, she so she's yeah. right, so she's she's on survival mode. And I go, I'm, look, your mom was putting it out there, but she was putting it out there because she was young and she was immature, and then. Somehow you guys, he, she didn't kill you, motherfuckers. I mean, because all of you survived. I mean, at least three of the five survived, you know. Um, well, but is he white? But not nah, black too. Yeah, white would have been drowned. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> at least three of them. At least three of three them. Of them. Let's, probably let's, the whole lot of them in a minivan, right. and they would have said a black guy did it. Yeah. Um, you bobbing <laughs> for apples. Is the water supposed to be boiling? <laughs> 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 so, so I was like, you gotta understand, your mom's a hoe, and and he was like, you know, I don't, you know, he didn't know how to. He had no masculine figures in his life, and he said, uh, he, I said, so I want you to understand that your mom hasn't. She she doesn't have the ability to pick a good man like she's never done that and then what she did was on in her later life because she was because she was a hoe she she uh she jumped into church heavy and tried to wait for her. church to, i was waiting for church to come See, out this is mouth. what i'm saying it's, uh, but here's yeah. the thing a, a therapist is not gonna tell him that 
A therapist right. is not going to tell him that that he that she's trying to wash her sins away in church, and then then she had him, you know she basically let the church raise her kids because single mother, and now she has this she has this fellowship within this this religious community, and I'm like I'm saying to this dude, I said, so you got to understand your your mother has a low opinion of you, but your mother doesn't. She's never been able to pick a good man ever. So how would she possibly know what a good man was anyway when she, in, in throughout her life, she's never been able to pick a good man, you know? Right. And I'm like, you got to forgive. You have to forgive her because she was really on survival mode. She never was really flourishing. She was trying to pay the bills, trying to feed y'all. She's too young anyway. She's got kids. She has no idea how to raise kids. So she's just surviving. And so in the process of you surviving, you you don't have the the you don't have the wiggle room to be nurturing. Yeah, I go, that would be weird as shit if you if you got burned by a woman and you have a kid with her that you're raising and she looks exactly like her. That that's hard to. Do to, you think Do you think that would be the same the, thing for a guy? I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, just the there's just like a subtlety to it, you know. I mean, it, it would never happen to us, so who knows? It's a, it's a kind of a, an, a, an insane hypothetical to ponder, but like, you can see there being like that that some kind of bias happens over time, right? But no, yeah, you're but right. I, I like, the mom feel, sucks. I, I kind of feel like you, you know, like you know how you we say a lot of times that you know women are so emotional, and what I'm I'm even adjusting that in a sense because men are emotional but we're emotional about different things like we're territorial and we're possessive and and those and and that the emotion comes out as anger and jealousy and stuff like mm -hmm. that so we're emotional but we're in an emotion a different emotional way but i don't think that men real like we don't have at least not when it comes to kids where we have these these kind of arbitrary triggers at least when it comes to the kids you know what i mean like this is yeah, my yeah. daughter it would just be weird. It would just be super weird if, if like the the person that burned you was like growing up in front of you, you know. But I mean, you know, we we I think I mean, don't you think that we as men, you kind of you you become a little more. But look, we're in, we're we're not pragmatic when it comes to oh, you slept with another dude. You know what I mean? But we're real <laughs> pragmatic about, oh, this is my daughter. She looks like a mother. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a different emotional kind of connection, whereas... It is, it is a different connection, for sure. I always yeah. get yeah. fascinated by a dad that just kind of... I feel like it's feast or famine with dads. Either they're all in or they walk away. Like, and, I, and I've never understood the mode to be able to just like abandon your family completely. You know, but that seems to be it's either a dude is all in or he walks away. That's always the way I've, I've seen it anyway. Well, I, I think also what happens is your manhood is attached to, to your ability to provide. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think yeah. not. Listen, if, if you're a dad, even if you're a dad who's, you know, is kind of a selfish dude who who's a walk away dude. Right. He if he's got a lot of money, if he's rich. It's nothing better than to go, hey, I got you this car. you like, we, men kind of like to do that kind of stuff. Like, where you, hey, yeah, give me two of those cars for my kids. Yeah, give me those. And maybe never be there nurturing in a way that you really, but money and finance and being there is something that men kind of do. And I find that they don't do it when they don't feel like they're satisfying whatever, whatever status or whatever level they feel is reasonable you know what i mean it's sort of, sort of like if you don't have a job and you got you got you're struggling and you're trying to so you go i don't even have enough for me right i'm never gonna be the dad that i want to be because even that is a is even the generosity in that is to be able to say yo i'm a good dad and i'm a good provider it's as as much as the giving is generous what you receive back is 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 selfish you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's way worse if you're a deadbeat dad and you've got money. Oh, yeah. that's a, But, I mean... I don't know. I've seen a lot of deadbeat dads. Like, the first thing they do is get a... You know, never pay for the kids, but they got two jet skis. You know? <laughs> Kenny like, Powers. I've seen plenty. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's that same type. Have a mustache for too long that's out of style. You know, and a mullet haircut. I've seen it. I've seen it. Hey, and hey, I'm hey, not just hey, talking hey. white people. Oh, Jesus, oh. Richie. 
Yeah, you don't see that from the front. Shit? Yeah, come Reggie's, on, Reggie's son. been growing that for a while, though. What Dude, is I'm going Florida on? I'm Florida as fucked out here. Yeah. No dirt. <laughs> look, at them, look at them parts. I got the Zorro shit on the side. Do you wow. have a tiger? I think you got a tiger. I want one so bad. Wow. <laughs> Richie's just trying to fit in Florida. He's like, listen, I got to look like the locals down here. To get not, they probably, if you just shown that mother, they wouldn't even have stopped you. Like, dude, where you coming from? And you'd have just, you if you'd have rolled your, your mullet out, they were like, uh, come on through, guy. I know. There's definitely part of me that wonders, like, if I was single with this haircut, what would happen? Oh, jeez. <laughs> like, like, if you want to see Richie's mullet, by the way, you could go onto the YouTube page where we post this episode because it must be seen. That is a, uh, that's pretty, that's a tight mullet. I mean, you went yeah. all the way on the sides. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You got feathered in the back. I had a back. mohawk at first, but I let that grow in. But yeah, right. I got the Adidas on one side, the Z on the other. This Sheesh. is what happens when we don't have to make appearances for a while. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, Dre, the barbershops is open, you know. What's up? I ain't going. I am, t I'm fucked at. My mama asked me about my hair cut, my girl, my sister. I ain't getting shit cut. It don't bother me. I'm ugly. He's going. You just sticking with this pursuit of happiness shit? That's the thing. I can swing for the fences now. I'm impervious, baby. I got a ball in a bald spot. Bring that shit to me. <laughs> that haircut comes with an All Lives Matter t-shirt. <laughs> Dude, I have... Richie's a... That's the All Lives Matter haircut. Yo, I... I have such a burning desire to fight in a Walmart right now. <laughs> I will set it the fuck off about this baby food. What? <laughs> what do you mean you don't have the kind of Similac that I fucking need? Infamil. This shit don't fuck Infamil. This shit don't taste nothing like breast milk. <laughs> And I know breast milk. <laughs> I'm not the one. <laughs> oh, my That's God. Crazy. That, what That's made you go about doing that, Rich? Just like, I, I got nothing to do. Let's go for it. Or what? Yeah, were you growing I mean, it out? And then you just. Well, yeah, I was. It, it was all, you know, one length, like two months, a month and a half ago. And it was, you know, it, it had gotten away from me. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to give myself the haircut I wanted when I was in eighth grade. And my mom wouldn't let me have it. So. <laughs> And I look like an eighth grader that smokes weed with his mom. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted when I was a kid, uh, my, my one of the guys I, love, I loved was Sting, like the wrestler. And he had like a rat tail. And I thought that shit was so cool. And I wanted a rat tail. And my mom was like, fuck, no, I'm not giving you. In hindsight, she made the right call. But Dude, I was that shit now. I'm there, not doing the rat tail now. <laughs> there has never been a more accurately named haircut than the, the rat tail. The rat tail. Man, I, Even... absolutely, I absolutely had a rat tail. So. <laughs> no. I absolutely and the bald had head? A... That's no, I had, a, I had, a, I had, a, I had a, uh, a fade and a rat tail. Oh, Ooh. hell yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. I pictured you with the bald head and the long ass, the, uh, the shit from Bloodsport. Like, like a Mongolian. My Mongolian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 so Liu Kang uh, shit. Trying I to saw a lady with that uh three days ago and, and walking Dude. around in the city with a with the with the Mongo, the blood sport shit <laughs> and a and a long ass dreadlock. Oh she was crazy. God. That bitch I played remember by her own rules. It was wrapped up like a bun on a ball it was a bun on a ball head. I was like, all right, bitch. I hear you. Yeah. I remember one of my science teachers, he was black and he had like he had three cornrows. I mean, like just three, like one on the each side and one down the middle. And I was like, what are you? I think he was going bald, but he just wouldn't accept it. <laughs> yeah. And I, was oh, just I like, love that. So, so with the corn row with some corn missing. Yeah. <laughs> corn missing. Yo, you <laughs> know what you could do, Harry? You could you could fucking grow that beard out and get the Captain Lou Albano shit. Oh, so, the <laughs> rubber bands. The the rubber bands. bands. <laughs> oh, what? that's fucking crazy. Why? Yeah. Why? I, why do you start I, putting rubber bands in your in your beard? <laughs> I don't know, man. That's, That's what you just say. Fuck it. You let go of life completely. You ain't paying taxes no more. Nothing. Yeah. Who's the dude with the diamond in his beard? Diamond Which guy was that? The wrestling yeah. wise? No, it wasn't wrestling. It was some some old commercial. Was like the like, dude smiled and then ding, it hit you with the diamond, diamond stuck in his it beard. It wasn't anybody yeah. from ZZ Top or something. Possible. Mm. Oh my God! I don't know. Diamond in the back. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, I'm, I, but it's funny that you talk, I was talking about that, the dude, like, you know, like, it's weird how people will go to, uh, they'll go to therapy for 10 years, seven years, right? And then when they call me, they're like, yo, I just paid you for an hour, fix me, money. Like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, dog, this is way involved um but it was like getting back to the value i was like you're 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 letting people you're letting people who don't even know what value is tell you what your value is you know yeah like like your mom and your sister and your brother and they, and and then you have no because the the crazy thing about it is is as much as you know you know and i and we've we've kind of gotten more even on the show, more fluid about gender. I mean, uh, Andre doesn't want to fight when you when you say he might be a little AG, LGBTQ. He doesn't want to fight no more. Yeah. He's a, he kind of laughs oh, it off. Congratulations, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> He's more enlightened. Uh, uh, well, that t-shirt some. was a half top this whole time. But it, it's a yeah. funny thing about about the fact that in order to be a man, you need a man to teach you how to be a man. Uh, yeah. And and even with my, with my kid now, you know, my kid's 10 months, and there's a, there's a different energy that his mother has that than I have. So, like, if he wakes up in the middle of the night and I go to pick him up to, like, con- cuddle him or whatever, yo, he's – he puts his foot on my chest – Right and pushes off like get yeah. the fuck off like I don't want and and then his mom grabs him and then he's just like mm, like the, so there's there's a different so yeah. it, it's a different energy it's even in it's, it's like even when you talk about this gender fluidity um you there's such a difference in the way this baby responds to his mother than he responds to me so if you try to say that there is no gender it's just it's it's so not true because I could, you know, it's on such a base level with this kid, you know. Yeah, dude, I I was I was having the conversation recently about the importance of men in young men's lives, and that you need, yeah, you you absolutely need that. Like, yeah, there's a ton of successful athletes that had single moms, but at some point, a man with good intentions showed him how to be good and what sure. it means. The va- yeah, the value in being good at something, right? Yeah. And like yeah. the, 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 the craziest metaphor for all this shit is that um, it was like 10 years ago when I first read about it, there's a problem with rogue elephants raping rhinoceroses to death. What? Yeah. And it's, it was caused by poaching that they, the, the first, the most valuable tusks were that of, uh, of large male bull males, right? They would kill them first. So it would be a Wait, herd. Uh, elephants or rhino- rhinoceros? Ele- elephants. Yeah. Elephants. Okay. So it would be it, the, these young male elephants would grow up without any male influence in their herd. Right. And they would wind right. up going rogue when they go in. I think they call it musk when they, when they get all their testosterone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the first time ever, and it was like a result of these things being 15 years old, however old it was, at, at the peak of like, yeah, you know, male, it, it was perfectly timed with the peak. Yeah, but it was perfectly timed with the peak of poaching, wiping out all the male elephants. And they were they were literally going on rampages and and raping even, you know, male rhinoceroses to death. And it was because to death. Really, to death. Uh, yeah, and and they they determined that it was because they never had males to check them. Male, male you know? guidance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, was, there was no like like yeah. We can we can wrestle. We can butt heads. But it, you know, if you keep the shit up, you're getting fucking checked. Right. And right. Yeah. So it's like it's the ultimate allegory for these, that kind of shit that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, these it's, just it's, these male elephants because they had no dad are just running around, just like taking taking sneakers off the rhinos and like taking people's <laughs> taking lunch the, money taking their yeah. eight ball jackets yeah. and shit <laughs> <laughs> stick up kids yeah it's we, fucked we, up though isn't it we were talking to dan soda and he said you know his dad wasn't around like early on wasn't around and he he told the story about the first you know like he was tall and long and his dad he goes the, the one few memories he had about his dad was him saying look you're tall and long you should play basketball 
And then he was sitting there. He goes, turn around. And the guy, he turned around and put your hands up. And he blocked this shot. And then that's the one memory. He says the one time that he had his dad around to tell him what to do, he had this success. And he was like, he said he always went through his life going, you know, what if this motherfucker was around mm -hmm. the whole time? You know, like I, I, I you know, I'd have been Larry Bird, you know what I mean? Like, a star uh, of billions. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> His bitch ass supporting role. <laughs> I, it's weird because I was, um, you know, Ted, a good friend, friend of the show and friend, you know, comic Ted Alexandro is mm -hmm. super liberal, right? Sure. And uh, he, you know, he, he has a son. He, we have, you know, he has a son now too. And... He, you know, and he's so gender fluid. I mean, sometimes I think he's too liberal. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, yeah. it goes beyond logic sometimes. He's, he's super extreme. Far is he away. like yeah. not saying that, it, that he's a boy type of shit? No, what he's saying is he's, he was, we were talking about our kids and he was talking about, yeah, that, like, you know, that his, his wife understands the difference of, in the cry, like she could tell the difference. She could tell the cry when he's hungry, when he has gas, when he has to go to the bathroom, when he's sleepy. She knows the difference, and he's kind of like oblivious to it. And mm -hmm. I was saying, you know, but there's, here's a guy who who talks about that there's no. I mean, look, no, I'm, we're not, and I'm not talking about uh, gender roles. When you're talking about gender roles, and you're talking about, you know, you, you should be in the kitchen barefoot pregnant. Why? I mean, I'm not saying, but there is a difference in that. And he was telling me how he just, he can't, he can't discern. It's like, even my wife has this, like, she has this mommy hearing, like she can hear, like, I don't hear shit. And she, yeah. uh, and then she just w gets up and walks and then she comes back with the baby. And he's like, crying because he woke up and I he hasn't even gotten to a full cry yet and she knows that and so there's definitely something there's a difference in the way that and and even Ted was admitting to the fact that he can't he can't discern these no matter how sensitive he is and how how uh how should I put it how aware he is of the, the fluidity of gender yeah. and there's different blah, blah. strengths man for sure yeah there's no yeah. way about it well, and then, and I mean, that's I'm, how we're designed for the most part. You know, we're designed. There's a function of why we have continued with evolution and why we continue to grow as a species, human beings. That doesn't mean that other variables don't exist, that being gay isn't legitimate. It is, you know, that right. uh, that even, there's even always if you're being trans, to the rule, whatever. You yeah, know? there's always exceptions to the rule. But the problem is, I think it's because of political correctness. We're trying to make up for hundreds of years of lost time and shitty behavior by going all the way to the other extreme and going, uh, gender doesn't exist, you know? And it's, it's, I get the intention is good, but it's just not realistic. Like yeah, yeah. men and women bring different things to the table for the most part that often can't be, you know, with the exception of a couple, you know, with a couple exceptions, that's what we are, but we just don't want to acknowledge that because we're so far left to try to make up for shitty behavior. It just doesn't make sense at times. Yeah. It's, uh, it's 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 real interesting to see um how that and and here's the thing that that level of you know i guess you would, i don't know if it's di i try to call it dominance instead of masculinity because it's it's it, i you know it becomes a little more fluid because we've had trans people and and gay and lesbian people on the show and and even in their relationships exists this dominant person and for lack of a better word the more masculine in the relationship and the more feminine in the relationship or the more dominant and more submissive. And it still exists that that yin and yang still exists in those relationships, you know? Um, and the attractiveness of a woman who is uh, constitutionally feminine is always attracted to the man who's masculine. I mean, there's always a degree to it, but it's you always- You wind up with lesbians that are masculine. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's 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 you're a, saying with so, the, the confines of the energy and the demeanor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, you don't you don't get. I mean, who did we we had Judy Gold on, and G, uh, Judy goes, yeah, bitches are a pain in the neck, and I'm like, yeah. she, you know, she's yeah. she's she's six ten, you know, yeah, <laughs> with yeah, giant. She, 
palm in a basketball. Gold. <laughs> Judy Gold of all people that women are annoying. They're they're annoying to be in a relationship with. <laughs> We're like mm, Judy. They make their point over and over, and then yeah. they won't stop making it again and, and they again. Yell it, and they yell it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, and they hunch really, down. Yeah, it's it's insane. It's, um, how's things going now with the with the you know? The, so the parents are the parents are home or no? Are they still in the hospital? Or what? Yeah, they are home. Um, yeah, they're they're getting a lot better. Um, we're kind of just we're we're down here until her dad is strong enough to to come back up. But it's probably going to be like mid August or something. Um, mm. well, luckily, we've got a whole different side of the house, and okay. uh, you know we got things going again, which is cool. Uh, yeah. the, the the final thing for uh, for restoring your yes. life. You got some stink on the, on your hang down, <laughs> on your hang low. Yeah, <laughs> it's hang. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. The the final step in in uh, getting her sex, sex life back was that she had a fucking baby monitor on her parents, and I was just oh. finally like, if you don't get rid of this fucking thing, because like we'd be like like rubbing up on each other, and then you hear like. <laughs> It's two seventy-year-olds both have double pneumonia. Like, yeah, I think we can do better. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, the sound and everything. Yeah, wow. it's too much pneumonia. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, th- th- we've we've come and, out. And, of and she was wondering why your dick was hard when they were coughing. That's <laughs> <laughs> got that COVID dick. Uh, but no, things things are cool. We're 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 very cool right now. So it's good. yeah. Yeah. It's it's dope. I mean, I I you wonder um, if coming through, you know, I I I find that like I mean, me and Harry and me and, and me and Dre, like we've been doing this podcast for a long time and we've been through a lot of shit, and and I and and I find that it's it's going through the stuff that makes the friendship that it 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 yeah. etches the it it etches yeah. the friendship in stone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, 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 I wonder if that if this makes the relationship stronger because you know she has to go. This dude was here, you know, right. like this. He put and while well, your parents around or no? Your parents still around yeah, or my, no? My parents are a few hours north of here in Florida. Um, oh, they're in Florida as well. Yeah, so it's worked out. We've been able to go up there a couple of times. And but, how did uh, they friend do do all of this? They've been fine. I mean, we. I, I I had to yell at them at the beginning to get them to actually quarantine. You know, it's like, yeah, we've been quarantining. We just go to breakfast like every day, and you know, <laughs> we go to the supermarket a few times a week. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, Lisa's and her whole family is extremely grateful that I'm here, and I'm you know, I'm I'm taking care of shit. Like, I'm doing the stuff that I can, and yeah, it's like, look, you're not a man unless you, you can't be the man unless you're going to be a man. You know, and right. it's like, yeah, you got to be willing to make the sacrifices. And yeah, and you can't be that dude that's like, oh, I don't do hospitals. You know, it's like, no, you got to fucking show up when people need you to show up for them. And you don't it, and I don't get to decide how I show up. You know, it's like I got to I got to do the shit that needs doing. And, uh, you know, and it's it's like you can't expect a, a fucking parade because you take the trash out. You know what I mean? It's like, just do it. Just do the shit that needs to be done. And I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've been in that mode and, uh, you know, like it, it feels good to take care of your people, you know? But the, the problem is when it's just not, a, when you don't feel like it's, it's appreciated when you've done so yeah, much. No, it and, is, it, and I don't think we look for, and you're not always looking for like, you know, somebody to fucking, do fireworks and shit, but you you want to be appreciated for the things that you're doing and the sacrifices you make. Just to a thing, just to know, to be acknowledged that you're doing it. You know what I mean? Um, Thanks. Yeah, uh, that's always to me when there's someone. We know when you're in a bad situation where they complain about, they bitch about something small. You're like, oh, I, we're not keeping score then. All right, well, I guess I got to pull out the scoreboard now. Yeah. Let me wipe it off just to remind you what the fuck is going on. Yeah, yeah. I, I just happen to have a uh, a quill pen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to write everything down. An inkwell, you roll it out. Mm, hear ye, hear ye. Right. It's, it's uh, it has it brought you. You think it's brought you guys closer? Yeah, I think because so. she gets to see see a different side of you, or did she kind of already see that? I mean, um. <sighs> 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's what it was in particular, but I mean, there's there's definitely something about you know people that survive a shipwreck together, right? It's like, yeah. like you know, you you've got that thing, yeah. and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we bent we bent for a little bit, but we didn't break, so it's all good. I think you come out of this situation. I think couples either break or they come out of this stronger and realize that they do love each other and they do care. I think it's one or the other. This is. The 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 uh the quarantine, I mean, yeah, just yeah. being stuck together. You realize either, oh, I do. You remember why you love them, or you re- you realize that you hate them. I don't think there's anything in the middle. I think it right, all. Right. Andre, yeah. love, Andre, love is when you you actually care about somebody. Chicken. And, what? Chicken. That's chicken. A, he, it's he chicken. Loves chicken. Love is chicken. <laughs> <laughs> love is when your heart fucks somebody else's heart, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> In, all, everything. in the butt, in the butt, in the heart, Fuck yeah. your heart in the butt, right in that heart butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I've never. I, I've. Uh, uh, it's funny because Harry's out in California with his girl, and uh, I've never seen Harry this happy in my life, in all of my oh, life. And I, sportman of button up shirts with all kind of little speckles and flowers on them. <laughs> <laughs> Harry I like Harry. Fat Harry better. Dressed like a two-year-old. <laughs> you like why? You like Fat Harry better? Why? Oh, dude. Ah, he's so jolly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not the Fat Harry I knew. Uh. Oh, no. <laughs> I was more depressed back then. <laughs> he was eating bacon. I'm still eating hey. bacon. I just don't eat the bread. It's fine. It's fine. Hey. No, I'm... Good times. I'm enjoying myself out here. I'm having a great time because, uh, you know, it's not a problem. Like, I've been prepared with other shit that that's the other thing is most of the guys dealing with all these things. They're just not prepared. You know, this is a heavy thing. And if you didn't have control and if you weren't, you know, if Back. you didn't have get your stuff together before you were stuck in a house before COVID, it's this is not the best time to sharpen your tools. You know, you know, I'm. Just you know, I mean, my... sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. What'd you say, Dre? Uh, no, Dre, you, I want to hear. I want to hear you now. <laughs> you know, that's the reason why no, I was no, like, I didn't, I didn't hear what but, you said. I was saying that he was saying that COVID could catch people at a bad time, and then you just now you fucked up in the situation. And I feel like it caught me right at the tip of oh, I got my shit together. So it was yeah. like just as I started to be like I'm on track. That's when COVID came. Yeah, like could, you Im- oh. could you imagine if you was with Donifer? Ah, uh, in COVID, spot boxing, nigga. <laughs> Donifer, that was a, a so, person. Uh, so I didn't even the white girls too. <laughs> nah, <what? laughs> two of them, I ain't Donifer. <laughs> so I had a, I had a, I had a girlfriend that stabbed me, right? Oh, and wow. this, and uh, and he had a girlfriend who rem- was like a young her. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So we, so we, we combine the nicknames a little. We, bit. Called <laughs> a, we combined the names together because it was like, but uh, it was a mini me that Andre Dude, was going through. Like, it was a mini me, and so days. Andre would be like, "Yo, let me ask you something." I was like, "Yeah, I've been there, been there, been there." It wasn't I, right, Dre, I don't think it was anything that I didn't get. That's true. It was funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, somebody ever stab you? Yeah, yeah, I've been stabbed. I've been stabbed. Dre, I've got two words. Nope. Safety scissors. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna want to get <laughs> safety <important>. scissors. <laughs> well, now Dante yeah. has nothing but those kid scissors. Yeah, you're right. In the whole house, yeah. no steak <laughs> knives anywhere. I can't get a fork for nothing. It's all plastic if, utensils. It's rough. If you come to my house for a tomato, I ju- I don't cut it. I just hit it with my fist and I break it up in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> just instant sauce. <laughs> just make it. I just bam, and then we we split it up. Whatever piece you get. Dude, talk about this for a, for a fucked up situation for somebody in in quarantine. You know, I'm I've been sober for a pretty long time, and I'm I'm still involved with recovery stuff. And uh, and Zoom meetings for that have been amazing. There's really there's yeah there's a guy that he's got like I think he's got ninety days about now, and this dude had to kick heroin in the fucking quarantine. Wow, yo. Could you imagine that? Dope on sick. Zoom? Like, did you see him on Zoom going through it or no? No, he was just, like, checking in every day, and there's a lot of people that were talking to him and shit, but it was, like, 
he he's one of these guys like he was a, uh, just a functioning heroin addict and uh-huh. he he thought about kicking for a long time and he bought like you know a 10 day supply but realized that if he did that again he was probably going to kill himself with it so he just decided to to go cold turkey and what, and what did he do fuck? with the 10 day supply supply oh, i cannot he, stand that he five. shot it all up what's your favorite sure. vegetable oh he oh he shot, got rid of it and then he went oh, he yeah. Said, like, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah, yeah. let's not be stupid right like, <laughs> yeah but dude fucking dope sick in quarantine that's oh. crazy brutal There's either that no or you could look at that. it the other way he picked the best time he didn't miss out on anything yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you got to check out that's the title of it in LA, you're not taking on this legal weed advantages, man. I didn't say that, but it's hard to go out anywhere, Andre. Everything is kind of shut down. down. It's also hard to lay off the carbs if you're high up. Yeah, that's the other thing. Stop being negative, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying, trying to get trying to, to do cocaine. Everybody. Are <laughs> oh, you trying to get was... me to bypass the weed? Just go, just go right up the chain. Put yeah. on your big boy drawers. Do some booger sugar. <laughs> Harry, you could definitely cop some cocaine with your hair and oh, your man. beard. Ah, uh, you, want to, look. you want to make a discotheque and maybe <laughs> get some cocaine? Huh? <laughs> we want to have a pool party me. at I my house. I'm dancing the discotheque. You don't like a discotheque? <laughs> <laughs> I went by Little Armenia. Not impressive. I'm not going to lie. I was no? a little disappointed. Yeah, I was a little disappointed. It's- Why? It's just uneventful. It's kind of it's, a. It's simple. like three dudes. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's three guys eating uh, kefta or whatever. And, it's, and you know. spinning on the floor a lot. <laughs> hey, bro. Spitting and smoking bro. cigarettes. Smoking bro. cigarettes. Unfiltered cigarettes. <laughs> Could you get some pretty sweet cologne deals there, though? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying, but all the malls are shut down. All the malls. I think they're shutting stuff back down out here, too. Like they're yeah. repressing. So well, whatever. they're doing that in Florida now, right? They shut. They're, they're holding back on phase three now. Florida's yeah, was, strong on the retardedness, though. Yeah, it was like a fun. peep show. Are you from they, there, Richie? Or no. no, no. They just they, both of our parents just happened to have moved down here. Where you, where you from originally? Jersey. Okay. What part of Jersey? Yeah. South Jersey, like close to okay. Atlantic City. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Boy. Cool. Cool. Yo, um, the other thing, I mean, you said you did your album. Yeah. yeah. Right. Talk to me about that real quick. Okay. So I recorded the last show before quarantine hit. It was March 14th at 10 p.m. Mm. Um, in Miami for a hammered crowd of MAGAs that literally everybody in this crowd thought that, that it was a hoax. Like, I mentioned Rona a couple times, and they're like, Pfft. Like, it didn't give a fuck about it. And, I mean, dude, it was, it was the weirdest night of my life. And I, I, I got a really good album out of it. Like, we, right. I, I think we cut out, like, 15 minutes of me just screaming at this crowd. <laughs> but, right. uh, and I learned that night What, did you that, get into it with him as well or no? Oh, I mean, well, I just had to get him to shut the fuck up, you know? Because, uh. like, like, I knew I was running the album. They didn't. So. Oh, they like, were just I mean, really I, I let, rowdy. And, you know, you know you're recording. Yeah, you gotta so like, like I left stop. like six or seven minutes of uh of crowd work on it, but they had to cut out a bunch of shit. But I learned that uh, being a Trump supporter outweighs medical training. That the three be- the three best laughers in the group were they came up to me afterwards and they've got their arms out like ready to like give me a hug. Like, You're so funny. I was like yo 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 yo. Like because like social distancing was all already in place at this point. And they're like, Ugh, you believe in this shit? I was like, uh, yeah. They're like, we're nurses. Trust us. It's all bullshit. It's all. It was nurses bullshit. telling you it yeah. was bullshit. Nurses. Florida nurses were saying that COVID is. Mm-hmm. I'm I, never going to Florida, I, dude. Yeah. I'm never going. I was just like, all right, keep that energy. But so yeah, Florida's so called hell number one place, album of man. the year. One uh, more time, Richie. It's called number one album of the year, just because I want to see if I can trick the algorithm somehow into uh, wow. <laughs> into play my shit more. And uh, yeah, I, I challenge you to find a better album cover. Anybody out there that's going to look, look this up, uh, I'm convinced I have the best album cover of, of all time. I'm, I'm just insane. putting that out there. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I took the, you know, the, the meme of the, the black dude with the huge hog on the side of the bed? The meme? Yes. So I found this oh, out. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I thought I thought I was going to get all kinds of shit 
but turns out that black guys were not playing the huge black dick game. The biggest meme of all of quarantine, Andre, was white people. We would send each other this picture, but it was like, oh, hey, shit. coronavirus is in your neighborhood, and you open it, and it's, and it's this fucking hog in your face. <laughs> so I, I got that photoshopped, and, the, and the, the, the huge cock is the number one in number one album of the year. I, I'm very <laughs> pleased with it. <laughs> so, but yeah, check it out. It's, uh, it's going to be streaming tomorrow, July 3rd. I don't know when this is coming out, but as of July 3rd, uh, it will be out everywhere, and if you don't buy it, I don't care. I want you to listen to it because uh, <sighs> I fucking miss comedy, man. So check it out. Hey, Richie, you would you say is would it be uh uh would I be correct in saying that you've made most of your money in comedy off of off of black audiences or no? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, it's not as much in in the last couple of years, but yeah. Um, but yeah, prior I mean, to it, yeah, yeah. Like the first ten years of my career was was mostly in uh, urban audiences. Yeah. So sure. let me when you when you look at this MAGA shit and you know and the, and this you know the the Floyd thing and all of that stuff. I, um, as being a guy who's kind of been, you know. A witnessed, member of that community, yeah, kinda. like you're a member. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you, like, how did that affect? I mean, so, so you're in the same. It's almost like you're a double agent. Like you're like, no, dude, it really sort of like the same thing with the COVID. It's like you're like, no, it, yeah, it really actually, is happening. Really, yeah, that's an interesting way way of putting it with the COVID thing because you know my my takeaway from the COVID thing is that uh, it's not real until it lands on your doorstep. Right. And um, I think the a, a, a kind of like, you know, flat watch point for me is when I see people telling other people that their experience didn't happen, mm. you know. Right. And and like like, for instance, I went on uh, I, I did Kumia's podcast and I talked about you know the the parents being on ventilators and this guy some dude tweets at me thanks for all the uh sanctimonious bullshit I was like oh what of talking about a, a real right. life situation like uh, the most intense shit ever like sorry if that fucked up your day man uh, you know and it's uh i don't know i i think that i'm i'm hopeful that uh that the the voices have are are getting elevated in the right way, you know, um, that like in my, I, I feel like my parents are always kind of a good bellwether cause they're not like at all hateful people. And, but like, they're very secluded, you know, they're, they're sequestered in their own white world. Mm -hmm. And like, right. you know, they're like, they're to the point of like, well, yeah, obviously something has, something major has to change, you know? Really? And then, yeah. But, and then you just hope that it doesn't. And get it wasn't because down. of the Floyd. Was it because of the, it was because, because of the Floyd because, thing? Yeah, because they saw that, and it's like, wow. and, and and my dad has been a a guy that's like, you know, you fucking you, you stand up when the flag when, when they're singing that song, and it was always yeah. like, well, how are you going to tell somebody that what they're saying is about something other than what they say they're saying it about? It's, you it's know? about and, yeah, and like so he's the walking that thing back, especially like, you know, so. So there is a lot of improvement. I, I think a thing that's weird is uh, is the corporatization of it. That like every yeah. fucking corporation is is now you know recognizing is, it. Yeah. yeah, now now weighing in on it. Like not everybody has to fucking weigh in on this, but. I do think that Hot Cheetos needs to say something. Right. Uh, it's, it's, They've been silent. For times too up, long. Hot Cheetos. They, you long. have Hot risen Cheetos to the top. And we yeah. have, and we've supported them for so long. Why don't they support back? Come on, y'all put honest. Chester Cheetos ki children's children through college. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a crazy thing. It's just like um, you know, I, I had a guy who worked with me in the phone company for like twenty years, and you know, and he saw everything. Like I had situations where I would go to fix somebody's phones and this white lady would just go, I'm, I'm not letting him in. You can mm -hmm. come in and fix the phone, but I can't, I, I've, I've been in Jimmy Choo, I, we were Jimmy Choo shoes on, on Madison Avenue. And I would come in and they would, they took me next door through the, you know, the, the gate in the floor, down through the basement, through the catacombs, 
around the back through a tunnel, back up a, a staircase in the back, and then locked me in the back of the Jimmy Choo Shoe. And the, and the Jimmy Choo Shoe's shop wasn't bigger than this studio. Like, wow. I mean, like I could see the back door from the front. And and it, it's, uh, it's interesting how malleable when people are not around it. So like years later, uh, when he retired and he went back to, you know, his his Lily White neighborhood with the with the, you know, the man made lake and he was in Denville, New Jersey and was just really oblivious. It's it's like once it once he wasn't Faced confronted with, with my day, yeah. stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, just didn't really. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm not optimistic. You know, what I mean, I'm not optimistic yeah. because you know, people don't Why, give a Dante, I mean, just based on history? <laughs> based, based on history, on, just based uh, on the last 400 years. 400 years of history, you don't... Doug, I, I, just read, I just read something, you know, we talk about Lincoln being the emancipator. Lincoln said, no, he says, he basically said that I'm, I'm, I'm about saving the union, but I also feel that there was a, 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 a hierarchy of belief and nor do I ever think that black people should or should ever be equal to whites and whites should always have the higher, the, 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 the advantage in the higher place because basically because we're savages. And this is the guy we prop up as the emancipator. Yeah. So it's, it's well, like- I mean, he was the, what'd you say Andre? I said they propped him up all special. They made a nigga like a hero. They got vampire movies with him in it. He's like this <laughs> cool guy you dress up as. Boy, it's that. funny because he only he they say, you know, when you the real story is that he only he only freed fifty thousand people, but there were um hundreds of thousands of blacks in the neighboring uh states in order to maintain their loyalty in the in the uh in the in the in the union that he didn't free at all. Wow, so, dude! I didn't know until this year the story. I, I knew I knew that it was a significant date of Juneteenth, but I didn't. Oh, know. you didn't know the Tulsa thing? Well, well no. That, well, what I what I heard was that um, it was that Juneteenth was the day in uh, in Galveston, Texas, two years yeah. after the Emancipation yeah. Proclamation, yeah. that they found yeah. out that they were should have been free that whole time. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, every year they should burn down Galveston. <laughs> Just yeah. build, it build it up. Build it up. That's why had to burn it down Twitter. every year. Every and every year time you talk to Bobby <laughs> Kelly, he goes, come on, dude. It was over, dude. It's over, dude. It's over. So you're like, all right, whatever. Yo, um, Richie, thanks for thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate you. You know I love you to death, bro. This was great, um, man. Thank you so much. Please plug your stuff. You what you got going on, bro? Yeah, Richie Redding, number one album of the year, and everything is at Richie Redding, at Richie Redding. You got links to everything, and my podcast is called We Don't Deserve Dogs. It's me and my veterinarian girlfriend interviewing people about their pets, and it's way, way funnier than I just made it sound. It is funny, man. They have comedians and stuff on, too, and and I, I've met his girl, and she's a sweetheart, too. I mean, you know, they're, they're both great people, so check that out. Drizzle, drizzle, Trey. Here, just Instagram, Twitter, Andre D. Thompson, Between Spots Podcast, all that, go look me up, that's it. Alright, uh, Harry, talk to me. Um, you could just check out the Man School 202 YouTube page for uh, this uh, clips and classic episodes that we're going to be uploading and stuff, so, you know, just check that out. And also, uh, the Catalyst Wrestling page, too, you could check that out. I'm, I'm the voice of Catalyst Wrestling, I'm on that, and we should be doing new shows soon, uh, as long as we could do them safely, so... Um, everything with me, it's uh, Instagram is the Dante Nero. Everything else is Dante Nero, Facebook, Twitter, so on and so forth. Uh, you can go to DanteNero.com and uh, click on consult and you can book time with me. Uh, also, uh, don't forget Manschool202.com uh, podcast. If you want to listen to the podcast, also uh, the YouTube page, Manschool202. Check out the, the the all the uh the clips and stuff we're putting. Harry's been busting his ass putting those clips up and and promoting. Uh, Gybb, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all, man. If you like what we're doing, tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody. We are out.